Don't go this place. You come in some money what you want. What you do, I'm going to come to the I love this place. I love this place. Oh, yeah. Nilifutama kuwa kiso suta Futama urgent in paradise estate Mwale 752721 Mwale futama website wato www.grandvillaguesthouse.com Dreaming of owning a property in a prime location with great proximity and fantastic neighborhood? EJ Investments Sanyang Seaview Estate is the best choice you have been waiting for. Our Sanyang Seaview Estate is approximately 15 minutes drive away from the busy hub of Busubi roundabout and into the heart of nature where you can have a peaceful and relaxed lifestyle with your family. You can buy a finished four bedroom story with five year flexible payment plan or a service plot with two-year premium plan option. With over 300 homes, you'll enjoy big tar roads with covered drainage, modern electrification with solar street lights, gated entrance with security post, and a breath-catching experience of our beautiful sea view and lake view. You can own a home today at our Sanyang Sea View Estate. Call us today on 446-4838 or 325-9220. Visit our website on ejinvestments.net. EJ Investments, first in property. Boy, Janno Seekers Restaurant. That's why I'm not going to be in the middle of the world. I'm not going to be in the middle of the world. I'm not going to be in the middle of the world. I'm not going to be in the middle of the world. I'm not going to be in the middle of the world. I'm not going to be in the middle of the Bad day lomba, conference lomba, workshop lomba, ye four pen in the dunya kono. Domoro better ma, nil lom international oti wada, number one. Amanke ba domoro jam damma. Esa domoro jam, is atari ya. Ah, wamu ku bandi. Ah, sa na ku sa futendi. Eh, oto sa na ku be mu seekers restaurant. Dama na jam na mu yak, ni manje jorombi jam. Aban. Seekers restaurant, known for best quality food and customer satisfaction.
Ela. Thank <laughs> you. 
Chairman Nena, Munge Kumase di Nuyu, His Excellency Bakari Bunja Dabo, High Table B, Nufaneka, Ak Steering Committee Members, Ak Nunyep, Chi Besmingham Nebu, Moy Besbu Mujen Telbi, Kurti Suni, Teo B, Mungamne, Teo E, Gambia for All Political Party Villa. Chairman Ko. Abi mewe wakonto na kadadi, His Excellency la Bakare Kunja Adabo, anin di steering committee members, anin mwono mwono baby sitting jan delegates on ni, jeso mwono baby jam, aba alwe konto na ba alja ila. Ko kaita na lako bila mtili sabanya uti, nindu kome ngefe, bakan bila mtili sabanya uta ba alja ndula ba alja ila. Assalamu alaikum bani ya mfullo fulbebe. Alhaji Bakare Kunja Adabo, Mumon tell me I'm not full of hand. You tell me I'm in the hand. You want to buy the tat hand. You tell me I'm in the hand. You tell me for the hand. Oh, you are not going to stop. 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 I'm sure all participants have noticed that in accordance with the program circulated, this session should have begun with resolution adoption and election, then followed by election of officers. But I think we can all recall that yesterday we went as far as adopting the resolutions before we ended. Uh, deliberations. So what is going to be done is that we will move into election of officers first and then come back to presentation of the resolutions that we have already adopted. The reason is final editorial work is being done so that we have a correct copy of the resolution reflecting the views of the various committees accurately. And since we are all here, this offers us the best opportunity to do that rather than wait until people have gone to their respective areas. So you will bear with us. We will move into the election of officers for the new party. And following that, by which time I hope the document would have been ready, we will now move to present the resolutions and then proceed with the rest of the program. I urge all of you to be patient with us as you have always been and to look forward to having proper documentation rather than rush documentation which is an adequate. <laughs> Instead of dealing with resolutions first, as indicated in the program, we will move to the election of officers since work is still being done to produce the final text of the resolutions. Uh, 
party chief mobilization and on that basis I wish to invite nominations for the chief mobilizer for the Gambia for all party. for the position of national mobilizer. Any what? other nominations? Now, we have one name, Bakari Sidi Fadera, nominated and seconded. Any other name that you wish to put forward? Without any hands, then Bakari City Federa is duly elected. Bakari, can you stand up, please? The next position is National Treasurer. Now this is an important post because Next position is National Treasurer. 
this is a very important boost because this is the person, male or female, who will be responsible as the custodian of the party's resources, money, and any item of value. And we will expect that person to be of such character and abilities to handle that position with diligence, honesty, and transparency. I now wish to invite nominations for the position of treasurer. Congratulations. 
is duly elected by popular acclamation. Is Mr. Tal a bit the crowd here? Regrettably, he's not around, but I, I understand he's aware. That he will be nominated. Okay. Okay. 
And finally, on that note, I want to also remind ourselves, all of us, that what we have done this morning is to challenge Mr. Dabo to come forward to the people, to join them, take a journey. I said it wouldn't be easy, nor would it be pleasant. But we are not going to leave him alone. Because if we do, he may not be able to do it all by himself. He will need our support from today onwards into the future. He will need our good counsel. He will need our ideas. He will need our physical body support when it is necessary, using our strength, using our resources. So I would, as chairman of the Congress, implore every member here present to make that dedication and rededicate oneself to service of the party in the interest of Gambia. It is about Gambia we are talking about here. We are not talking of Bate, we are not talking of Alaji Tamujai, we are not talking of Bakadam. We are taking these steps in the name and interest of Gambia. And that is what is important here. We are joining, move this country from where it is to where we think it should be. And in that journey, we have elected somebody to lead us, to show us the way. So we will follow him and help him along the way. If the, if the road appears bushy, maybe we'll clear some of the bushes so that we can pass. He need, needs knowledge. There are people within this gathering who have enough of that. If it needs other resources, we can put our little bits together to get uh, what we need in order for the party to move and for the objectives to be attained. All the while through the 1,000 miles, we never lose sight of the objective, which is Gambia going forward for all. I thank you very much. Now we move to the next item on the agenda, which is the presentation of resolutions that we adopted yesterday. Mr. Sonko, are you okay? And and then I have the pleasure to call Mr. Sonko to present the resolutions. We've already adopted them. They were doing editorial work, so he's reading it back to you, reading them back to you, so that you confirm that they have not been tampered with. So, if anything, it's to improve the language and the presentation, so that when you publish the documents, we have complete. Mr. Sonko, yes. Chairman, I crave your indulgence. I think we have received. Uh, very important news, although it's not news in itself, because okay. I, that's oh. what we wanted. Mike, please. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I create your indulgence. I think the Congress has reached its high watermark, and we have crossed it successfully by identifying our party here. Today is a source of great joy. Today is a source of hope. Today we have a leader, a leader to lead us in the battle to regain and put this country back on the track of development. I think this momentous occasion needs to be watered down. 
piano with a little music. So we have a song and I want the musician to think of a slight entertainment in five minutes before I leave the solution. Okay, thank you. So
Congress of GFA and I want once again take the opportunity to congratulate all the delegates present here and our guests who have all helped to make this Congress inaugural in character I think a very very successful Congress which I hope the subsequent Congresses will be holding, will be able to surpass it. It has been. Thank you. 
Kalu, Kalima, Melona, Naruto, Momelana, Jagas. Um, the Congress meeting from Friday 11th to 13th October 2019 consider and pass resolutions on the following areas, in the following areas. You want to do all? Okay. Uh, yes. When he finishes, he can start part of it and then let him give it to Let him give it to the next Okay. Um, good, good stuff. Um, I, we, we have decided that I, I read the whole resolution, then you can do a translation. Um, resolution 1, which is participatory democracy, and we know there is a great deficit in this, in the country. The Congress considered the matter and uh, conscious of the urgent need of promoting genuine participatory democracy in the interest of peace, stability, and progress, aware of the importance of ensuring a, an effective balance between executive, the three powers of the state, aware of the need for ensuring citizens to have access to justice in cases where they feel victimized by the powers of state, the Congress hereby recommends as follows. One, certain important functions, including governors, justice, chief justices, heads of independent commissions, and similar ranks, shall be appointed by the President, but subject to parliamentary approval. Two, the appointment of village alcalus shall follow the traditional system of inheritance. Three, members of parliament shall... Please, please! Three, members of parliament shall consult with their electorates as part of the participatory democracy. Four, recommend the establishment of a police complaint commission to look into citizens affected or impacted by state power. And finally, recommend the creation of a national commission of elders to advise the president. This we consider to be important components for the promotion of participatory democracy. Res resolution two is on women, which the party considers to be crucial within the party for its activities, but important also in national development. And the Congress, in considering this matter, stated as follows the resolution. Aware of the important role that women could play in the national development process, concerned about their limited access to resources to improve their living conditions and ability to generate income for themselves, hereby recommend as follows. 
One, facilitate women's access to markets and creation of market facilities. Promote access to microfinance credits on a more sustainable women, more sustainable for and affordable to the women at interests that are manageable. Improve access to healthcare services, particularly maternal and child health, and provide more skills training for women and girls. Resolution number three, which relates to youth. Again, this is a key area of concern and interest for our party. And in that respect, the Congress considered as follows. Convinced of the important role that youth can play in national building, aware of the important constraints that affect the youthful population, and determined to create opportunities to fruitfully engage the youth, the Congress hereby recommend as follows. One, creation of education and skills training for the youth. Two, strong sensitization of the youth on issues relating to migration, particularly migration as we refer to as the bike way. Three, establishment of youth associations and organizations for more efficient management of youth affairs and providing the youth opportunity to voice their concerns and address their fears. These, ladies and gentlemen, are the important resolutions passed. There is a final one, but which relates more to the party itself and the need for it to double up its efforts. Um, conscious of the fact that the new party, GFA, is yet to be known by the population at both at home and abroad, and aware of the risks of negative political criticisms and comments against our party, the Congress strongly recommended that we have a strong political program, strong programs to, pro to sensitize the population about our party. And recommend also that we engage both the people at home and abroad on activities that could further bring the message of our party to a wider public. And enjoins finally that members of their party by their actions and behavior should set up good examples for other members of the party to emulate but also to highlight our difference in terms of respect for the rule of law, in terms of good self-component, comportment. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the four resolutions that the Congress considered and passed this Congress. Thank you very much. It's a bit confused. It, it is a big, it's a mess, mess. I would allow one or two interventions if there is anybody wanting to defend the correction on anything that we have said. Anybody wants to say anything that you have noticed in the inaccurate or so? Okay, fine. There is none. My next duty, of course, is to complete the process we started before the entertainment. And that is to invite the party leader and Secretary General, who has been duly elected by this body, make a statement to the gathering in honor and in response to his being challenged and called upon to lead 
the movement into the future. I have your now <coughs> invite Mr. Rakari Nida. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jaliba. Mr. Chairman, Assalamu alaikum, Mr. Chairman. I also I also feel pleased to acknowledge the presence. I also feel pleased to acknowledge the presence. I also feel pleased to acknowledge. I'm saying I feel pleased also to acknowledge the presence of our distinguished guests. I feel pleased to. I feel pleased to acknowledge the presence of our distinguished guests who have set aside their important businesses to come and be with us. Some have traveled all the way from Senegal and uh, outside of the Gambia. Uh, we feel very honored by your presence, which has uh, constitutes a big encouragement for us to the delegates to this Congress, my dear friends, comrades, I like to acknowledge 
with a strong feeling of honor, but also humility. The act you just now carried out in electing me as Secretary General for our great party. I cannot thank you enough for the confidence you have chosen to repose in me. Let me simply say I do feel deeply honored by this question. But apart from honor, the emotion I feel strongest in me today is one of is feeling of humility. I feel humbled in the face of the enormity in the face of the enormity of the challenges face, facing us, as together we have resolved here to embark on this project of starting a new party, a party which we hope, by the statements you made here, to be a serious party, not a party just in name. I do not have a lot to pledge or to promise on this occasion. I will simply say two things. I promise you that this constitution which you adopted yesterday, which is founded on the basis of values and principles which we have all agreed to guide us. This constitution, I'll do my very best to respect and to make sure that it is respected in letter and in spirit. That is my first pledge to you. My second pledge is, in the face of the huge, enormous tasks ahead of, ahead of us, I pledge for my part to give my very best effort. Every energy in me I'm prepared to put in the realization of the project which we have together, which we are together launching, that is the creation the Gambia for all as a party out to make a contribution to the political and social life of our country. Let me, before I proceed any further, also congratulate the other members who, have, who like me, have just been elected as officers of our party starting with the party national chairman, Saliu Momartal, who I personally know. The person with an impeccable career in the public service, both in the United Kingdom and in the Gambia, a person of great moral character, a person who has also, in the context of preparations we've been involved in since July, have shown his abilities, leadership abilities. I think we couldn't have chosen a better person to fill the role of party national chairman at this crucial stage when our movement will be in need of strong, moral force to guide and advise us through. For the position of party treasurer, you have also elected Dambuture, who also is no stranger to me. Yeah. Our relations, both work and personal, go back, I believe, to 1974 or thereabouts. But more importantly, Ndambu has demonstrated beyond any shred of doubt not only his commitment to the party but his ability to 
to handle the most complicated uh, financial and accounting tasks. Plus, of course, his general leadership abilities. So again, I think it's a very fortunate for me to have him elected by you as treasurer with whom we'll have, I'm, going to, I'm going to work. For the position of chief mobilizer, you have elected Bakar Sidi Fadera. Also, we also, during this active phase, the past three months that we have been actively sensitizing and trying to organize for this Congress has proven that he is a true man of the field. He has run across the country and we have seen him operate on the field. And he's, and he's, got, a, he's got a flair for organization and very good rapport with the populace. Again, I think it is to the good fortune of the party and to my humble self that you have chosen him to fill the role of uh, party national mobilizer or party chief mobilizer. I welcome them and congratulate them. I offer them my hand of collaboration. I'll be happy to have them on board. Of course, this three or four national officers that you have elected here are not the totality of the leadership structure for the party. Remember when we read through the constitution and approved it yesterday, you must have observed that our idea of leadership for our new party is that it will be exercised collectively through councils and committees that are provided for in the Constitution. So that these four officers that we are, that you have elected, will have very little, if any, personal powers or discretion. We are going to have to work with committees which the whole Constitution provides. So the field, not through the elective process, but through the process of appointment appointments to be endorsed and approved by the National Executive Committee that we put in place. So that uh, when the dust settles down and the profile of the leadership structure of the party becomes clear, you'll see that you are not taking the party and giving it to one or two people, you are giving it to a series of bodies and I believe that is what you meant when you adopted this constitution. Mr. Chairman, I just need to reassure the delegates, members of the party, including those who are not with us here. As I said, my pledge number two is that I will throw everything in me, every energy in this battle. Perhaps it will be my last battle in public life of my country, which I have had the honor of being a part of for nearly three to four decades now. I see this as my last battle which I want to be involved in fighting. Every energy in me, every skill that I have at my disposal, I promise you, I pledge here that I will devote them to the development of this party. <laughs> From this moment on, there is no turning back. There are a lot of things to be done. There are certain priority actions which I have to highlight here as those that will <coughs> occupy me and the leadership of the party over the next few weeks. Firstly, of course, is to move to have the party registered as required by the law and to have it formally launched in the field. We like to believe that this is something we can do in the next two to three weeks. In that connection, there is one task which we will together work on, which is to collect as required by the Gambian law at least 10,000 
signatures of Gambians on the electoral roll spread across the country. So one of the priority tasks will be through you, the constituency committees, and through the area coordinators here to proceed effectively in a well-structured and organized manner to collect that minimum of 10,000 signatures. But I think we can collect much more than 10,000 signatures. <laughs> With that in hand and all the other requirements of the law, we hope to approach the IEC, the body responsible for registering political parties in the country, we hope to approach them very shortly with our dossier and ask for party to be registered as a matter of right. We are not going to ask for a favor, but we are going to ask for what is our right. <laughs> Following the registration and hopefully the launch of the party, I will have to, as a matter of priority, turn attention to putting in place the different leadership organs provided for in the Constitution which you approved here yesterday, and there are a few of them. There will be, firstly, the National Executive Committee of the Party, which below this Congress is the highest organ of the Party. Fortunately, putting it together is a simple matter because it's, it's described already and prescribed by the Constitution, so we'll only apply what the Constitution says. It provides, in essence, that the National Executive Committee shall consist of two representatives of every constituency. So very soon, I will be contacting you, the chairman of your respective constituency committees, to look among yourselves and designate your two representatives that will sit with their colleagues from all over the country to constitute the National Executive Committee. The National Executive Committee, when put together, over 100 people will ordinarily, will normally, of course, be quite a large body, which may not be able to, easy to operate very frequently. So its meetings may not be more than two to three times a year, but in between, it has the powers under the Constitution to set up a directorate to be called the Central Committee of the Party, which will be acting in its name in guiding uh, the, the, the operation of the party on a day-to-day basis. So that's once the National Executive Committee is in place, the next thing will be to put in place the Central Committee, which will be and the directorate of the National Executive Committee. Under that, taking care of the day-to-day -day leadership and operational party will be the National Executive Secretariat, which according to the Constitution will consist of the, the, the Secretary General of the Party with about 10 or so Assistant Secretaries. So that is also another structure I will put in place immediately after the National Executive Committee and the Central Committee. We will put in place the, the National Executive Secretariat. Of course, the Constitution also provides that when the party is fully operational, we shall have, we shall endow ourselves with a body of distinguished Gambians, not necessarily members of the party, who we refer to as Board of Trustees to act as moral guardians by the side of the party. It will also fall to, to the leadership of the party to put that in place. The Constitution. That apart, there will be the, what we call the mass organizations, youth and the women. Your Constitution, which you have just approved, provided for the national the, 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 uh, for all women all women's league being the adopted for the women the mass organization of women within the party that as quickly as possible in keeping with the constitution 
it will entail somewhere down the line convening of a day's or one or two days national conference of women of the Gambia for All Party who have the prerogative according to the constitution to put together the National Executive Committee of the Women's League. That's also one of the things we will put in place as a matter of priority fairly soon. It is broadly the same pattern that the constitution provides for, for, the, for the youths of the party. There is a body provided for to be called the Gambia for All Youth League, which also will be put together through the National Conference of Gambia for All Youths, where they will elect their own National Executive Committee to, to take over the leadership of the Youth League and work with the party leadership. So those organiz uh, mass organizations also form part of my, what I call, uh, emergency program put in place as quickly as possible. Then there will be other standing committees. There will be the communication cell, communication being critical for our party, for any party, but particularly given the context in which our party is coming up, we are keen to handle communication with the best expertise that we can mobilize within ourselves. So it is therefore intended that we will set up a communication cell that will handle, advise, and direct much of our communication work to make sure that the right messages are put out and perhaps in a timely manner. The second committee we have to be putting in place some, uh, shortly will also be the finance committee who will walk around the treasurer for purposes of working to raise the resources without which the work of the party will not be easy, and also managing those resources once they are secured and uh, on a continuing basis according to rules and procedures you have already approved in the Constitution. Thirdly, there will be the National Organizing Committee, which has a huge role ahead of it. We just now elected Bakar Sidi Fadera to be the national mobilizer. He will head this committee, which also will be put together with the approval of the Central Committee of the party. And their role will be to help in spearheading the, the work that has already started with the setting up of the constituency committees that you represent here, but which still has a long way to go. The complete edifice, the complete structure provides for structures at the branch level, at the village level, at the constituency level, and at the area level. Similarly, it provides for comparative structures between Gambian communities in the diaspora who support the Gambia for All Party. So it will be, we'll be seeing branches approved and chartered by the National Ex uh, Organizing Committee, hopefully in all the villages in the Gambia where we have supporters, but also among Gambian communities wherever they are in sufficient numbers who support our party. In the UK, in Senegal, the USA, in Europe, and in the Middle East, wherever Gambians are found in sufficiently large communities who support our party. There, will also, there is also provision, and we're going to work on that also, to set up a committee for discipline and conflict resolution. We can be quite optimistic that our party will work, but it's important to have a structure like that dedicated to help us resolve disputes and conflicts when they arise. So that committee also, the manner it should be set up is provided in the constitution you have adopted. It will now fall on me to initiate action to lead to its putting in place. We intend also, and your constitution provides for it, to put in place a body to be called the Research and Analysis Unit, 
whose role will be to help the party, particularly the party leadership, with, inf with research and informed analysis that will be a useful tool to the party leadership in formulating positions and policies on issues of national importance uh, that will be arising from time to time. Nobody needs to accuse the party of elitism. It's no question of promoting elitism, but it's a recognition of the fact that running a modern party and aspiring to contribute to national affairs does require certain amount of uh, uh, knowledge and intellectual uh, input. And the, this research and analysis unit is provided for in the constitution which you have just approved to help the party leadership with that, with that kind of uh, support. We are going to put in place urgently the body you have approved in the constitution to be called the political education unit. It is said that, I don't know how far it is true, that uh, Thomas Sank Sankara did observe that a soldier without education is what an armed robber they call him or something like that. I want, I want to take, make a, an analogy and say party militants without suitable level of awareness are also not as helpful as those that who have been equipped with certain level of awareness. And the political education unit will have as its role on a continuing basis to help in raising capacity within the party and awareness generally. So that body also will have to put up very, very soon to work as a support to the, uh, the leadership of the party. Finally, there will also be the social committee. There is, uh, ours is a party uh, out for political objectives, but we are also consisting of human beings. So the social needs, be it solidarity, be it entertainment, are also not overlooked in the Constitution, and the Social Committee will come in to help the party leadership in attending to those. These, therefore, will constitute my immediate term program of activities to get the party going as far as the, uh, the leadership organs are concerned. But that's not all. We'll proceed, as I said, with completing and consolidating the base structures working through the organizing committee. I've referred to the, the constituency committees which are put up. In addition, we now have to go down below them and set up village charters and village committees in all the communities. Once that is in place and that's firmly consolidated, we want to put up another layer of structure to be called the area committee to serve as the party's main uh, engine to drive the life of the party at the level of areas. We have had the country divided into 12 areas, and each of them will have a committee elected by you, you as yourself to lead the, uh, the, the, the work of the party in that specific area. Similarly, the diaspora, as I said, is an integral part of the party. The people, that's our supporters who are in the diaspora, they too, wherever they are, in large numbers in any uh, town or city, will be encouraged and organized into village uh, 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 branches of the party. And where we have several branches in any country, we will encourage them to form themselves into an area committee of the party in those areas. These are also part of the uh, immediate term plans which we'll be working on. Once that is done, I will, once that is done, we will immediately embark on a detailed meet the people tour, if you like to call it, meet the people tour, we want to go around the whole country as well as in the diaspora, wherever we have supporters, to be our first formal contact with the masses of our mass following of our party, 
should be an occasion for us to listen to them, maybe also explain a little bit about the party, but listen to them and get their advice as to the way forward. This is also this is one of the emergency actions that I intend to, to lead in a very short time. Mr. Chairman, uh, these are what I see as my emergency uh, or, or immediate term work. I need to say or repeat here that you have impressed on us at this Congress and even before that what you want in this country, what the country calls for, is a, a party which will be a force for good for this country. The country is in a situation where it cannot be said that a new party in the mold of the one we have in mind is going to be one too much. We think there is a, a crying need for a serious political force to emerge, one whose primary objective will be not to, to forward my own political ambition or the political ambition of any other person, but one that is out to take its place on the political landscape of this country for now and for the future. We want a party, we want a party which want, we should make a, a vital and continuing contribution to the political and social life of our country, whether in the government or not in the government. We want a party which will stay as, develop and stay as a national institution like it is done in most major democracies. Political parties are not just there for immediate term gains of uh, their leadership, but more devoted to promoting a particular cause they believe in, particular values that they want to see promoted in the country, which values and which causes they can support, as I say, while in the government or but not even in the government. So this is the kind of party you have asked us to do. Uh, to, to set up, and this is the kind of direction in which I want to lead that party. Because the challenges facing our country are enormous. They are really enormous. I wouldn't even uh, attempt to, to enumerate all of them here. Some 24, 24 years of military dictatorship of the type that we experience here has left the country politically, uh, has, has decimated the political class, has left the, politi the, 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 the country politically polarized along all manner of fault lines. We have a situation now where all of a sudden, some, a phenomenon we didn't know before emerged and seems to be taking root where people talk in terms of their tribes, or they talk in terms of their, their, their faith or religion, or even in terms of their generation, as if the country is at war, the old against the young, the one ethnic community against another ethnic community, the women against the men, or if you like, people of one religious sect against another. This is the part of the political legacy we are left with by, by, by dictatorship and, and bad governance. And it's a reality we have to face. It's really tragic because we had prided ourselves in this country of the sense of oneness which since independence has been cultivated to the point that we took it for granted that all Gambians accept that they are one and the same. To sit back and see things go back a situation where we only define ourselves in relation to the village we come from or the ethnic community or the language we speak, or we define ourselves as to whether we are belong to the young or to the old, I think that's a very major setback politically. Economically, the country is no better. The economy has been badly ruined, as you know. The productive basis for our economy, be it tourism, be it services, be it agriculture, have seen consistent decline over a period of 22 years. Some sectors like agriculture are virtually collapsed.
how do you run a country with an, econ with an economy where productivity is so low? And it's low largely because of badly utilized investment, but uh, overwhelmingly it's because of bad governance. Goes along with corruption, inefficiency, and all those things. If you don't get the economy right, of course you create social problems. Social problems in the Gambia, we have a lot of it, we all know. I think they have, we have coined a term which in, it, in itself captures the reality of the enormity of the social, we call it back way, back way. I have read economics in many schools but I've never heard of an economy which developed or recognized back way or illegal immigration as a sector of activity. <laughs> but such is the situation of our country and our economy that desperation has been forcing our young people to think primarily of emigration upon leaving school. If anybody is in any doubt, go to any high school and talk to the, the students in the final class and ask them. If there are 60 of them, without hesitation, I'll bet that 50 of them are dreaming of going leaving the country. They have no hope in their country. Then there are so many other challenges. We don't talk about the environment. Look at our urban, urban, urban centers. Life has been so made so miserable by conditions which, in which the, uh, the population live, and make, being made worse every day with the with the uh, new environmental challenges, whether it's uh, climate change whether it's uh, uh, soil erosion, whatever you have. These are huge problems that are affecting and threatening the very livelihood of our people and their lives themselves. The, a large number of problems are there, as I said. If I try to cite them, maybe it will keep us here all the afternoon. But I believe that a large part of this is governance related, and a large part, when you talk about governance, relates to the leadership, the quality of leadership we have been, uh, had, we've had inflicted on us because it was most time not our choice. Bad leadership is a terrible pain. We have a situation where we enunciate the best principles in our constitution, democracy, separation of powers, checks and balances, but in reality, nothing like that obtained. We had an excessively overbearing uh, presidency which has its hands in everything, which over time has reduced parliament, the legislative arm, to just a rubber stamp, a rubber stamp institution. It has intimidated and cowed the judiciary into submission so that day in and day out you see people being dragged to courts and the courts having no choice but to do what the, the judiciary told them. It hasn't stopped at that. It has, in, the, in its role of coordinating the activities of the different government sectors, whereby ministries are reduced to just listening to what directives come from the president's office. As a result, even the reduced capacity left in our system, most of the time underutilized. It is the explanation for the gross state of inefficiency of our public services, not to talk of the corruption that goes along with it. These and many, many challenges are what beset our country today. So if a party like ours is coming up, it's important that we bear those points in mind, that this is the situation we are out to contribute our quota in changing it. And as I said, we, if the people, should the people of this country exercise their right to put us in charge, we will do our best. But even if that is not the case, we want, as a serious party, outside of the government, to continue to press and take a firm stand 
for the necessary change that this our situation calls for. I will not go too far into this because it is our intention very shortly to publish our vision, the vision that our party has for our society and our country. And most of these issues will be spelled out there in much greater detail than I can try to do them here in terms of diagnosing the problems as we see them, but also our ideas for dealing with those problems. Basically, this is how we want to proceed, inform the Gambians about what we want to do. Finally, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to be allowed to take some time to offer thanks because our, this event in terms of the effort that went into bringing it about, but also in terms of the work that has been accomplished here, the event calls for due credit to be given to the many, many quarters where it is deserved. My first thanks will go to yourself, Mr. Chairman, for, of course, providing the effective direction in your role as chair who direct the proceedings over the past three days with a, with a lot of competence, with, with a flair of your, for this kind of work, and with a lot of authority. We thank you very much. We appreciate it all the more because this is a new party, and when we plan to set stage this uh, Congress, we took in, we, for the person to preside over our proceedings, we placed a lot of store by the stature of that person, because we know that has a direct bearing with the image that will be given by giving off our, con our Congress and our party. So we are happy that you are filled that will admirably. We thank you. We thank you. We thank your two vice chair, chair, chair persons, Madam Mama Jamba. Namu. And uh, Mr. Amadulo, both of them, both of them senior uh, party members who have uh, kindly agreed to stand and assist you in your role as chair. And of course, in, in that bracket is included Brahman Dinjaite, the secretary to the Congress, <laughs> plus his three, his three able assistants, Malamin Baro, <laughs> Ablai Keita, The third one is, uh, who's the third one? There were three assistants, who's the third one? Anyway, all your assistants, we associate them and thank them for, for their, their, their contribution they've made. Um, second, I return to our guests and thank them for coming along. Most of them were here for the opening ceremony, but they have again come back. It's a tremendous support we have from you. We are very much encouraged. We appreciate it. The delegates, <laughs> the delegates, members of the GFA, I can call you comrades. You have sacrificed tremendously. Many of you are, in fact, farmers at the height of your uh, annual activities, but you have not hesitated one moment to set all that aside to come and be with us for three days, some of us four days. Nobody can ask for stronger evidence of commitment to our party, and I thank you very much. You have done your best. Our hosts, Jembe Hotel, I don't think we could have come by better hosts 
for their hospitality, for providing us most commodious facilities, for the care with which they followed us throughout the three days, including tolerating the noise and all the forms of nuisance we create. We appreciate and thank the management and staff of the hotel for their, for their, for their hospitality. entertainers, the Jaliba is reminding me. We thank you very much. Your contribution is very significant in making our proceedings not only um, useful but enjoyable, which is both part of it. We appreciate your input and thank you very much. <laughs> Particular thanks I believe are owed to the organizers, all those who have been involved in the planning and organizing this event, starting with the steering committee, which was set up on the 13th of July to prepare for the party's registration, and a key part of which work is the convening of this Congress. When we set ourselves two months or three months to call up this this, con this uh, Congress, there are many of us who believe we are being over-ambitious. Uh, only the most optimistic among us thought we could do it. I feel proud that we have been able to pull off the feet. This has, by all accounts, been a very successful event. We've been able to bring over, over 600 delegates safely from the far, far furthermost corners of the Gambia, on both sides of the banks, brought them in safely in a well-organized manner, hosted them. I've not had one person complain of not having somewhere to sleep. And we've also been able to attend to their other needs, including their feeding. And this has not been an easy task at all, undertaken by a team who only two months ago perhaps did not know each other. Thank you, all of you. I'm only happy that a number of you would gain from it very critical experiences that you will that will go to serve you in the future for the work of this party and even outside the work of the party. When I think about the technical subcommittee that did the planning for the transportation, the logistics subcommittee, at the beginning they appeared as if they didn't even know how to start. But over time I think they learned a lot and they have achieved considerably to make sure that people are here, as I said, safely, and uh, I'm, ho I'm sure they have plans to get them back home safely, equally safely. The catering subcommittee also took on a, uh, a very challenging task of providing for the feeding of this large number within a short time. We have seen, like every, every endeavor, their task has not, their work has not been without falls here and here, but overall I think they've tried their best and we must commend them. The people responsible for the working on the programs, the media, our relations with the media, and uh, all the other th items that work in, went into the preparing for the plans have done tremendously well and I'd like to congratulate them and acknowledge their, their contributions. Um, when I talked about those who contributed to the organization of this uh, Congress, because I was thinking not only of those who are within the territory, the national territory, but they include also those in the diaspora. In fact, those Gambians, those members of the party who are in the diaspora, do deserve very special mention. out of love for their country, above all, but also the faith they have come to repose in our party, these various communities spontaneously, without anybody inviting them, spontaneously on their own, sprang into action from the moment we announced our intention to organize this Congress and proceed from there to form the party. 
in the United States of America, in the UK, in many countries in Western Europe, continuously they are meeting, they are planning, they are mobilizing themselves, and their contribution in terms of ideas, but also in terms of resources, money, are more than what I can, I can, one can thank them for. Their contribution has been tremendous, and it goes to indicate and emphasize the point that distance is no bar to participating and supporting a good cause for your country if you believe in it. But it also means that the party leadership, like all other organizations, must not also make them sit at a disadvantage just because of the physical separation from the motherland. And that's why I'm happy that our party constitution provides for their very effective involvement in every level of the party's leadership and direction. And I will make sure that that provision is carried out. And finally, time has come to say goodbye. Goodbye to everybody, but particularly goodbye to our, our delegates who have come all the way. Time has come that you'll have to go back to your families and your constituencies. Um, you will be leaving very shortly. Um, I can see the happiness and satisfaction in your face. My prayer is that you go, you get home safely. In that regard, I will give a little advice to you as you board your respective go back. Remember. Your personal security is your responsibility also, so remain alert. Your leaders, your chairmen and coordinators must talk to the drivers to drive safely. We want to hear no bad news. We want you to go back to get your homes safely. Related to that, something I should have perhaps done when I was making my thanks is to thank the security services throughout the country, but particularly the security unit that has been made available to us, which has helped in controlling the crowd and seeing to our security. I thank them very much. So I say to you uh, goodbye to your constituencies and your, in your, in your towns and, and villages. But remember the point I told you. The short term, the emergency activity we have to embark on is the collection of 10,000 signatures, which have to be done, which have to have national character in that they have to be withdrawn from all the administrative regions. The details of it you have been told and you will be told more. From Monday, we will have a plan put in place. Be looking forward to hearing from us through your uh, area coordinators and your chairman, get to work, organize members within your respective constituencies so that when the forms reach you, within a matter of not days but hours, you are able to fill in the, the names on those forms and send them down. Because the submission that we need to go take to the IEC so that our party can be registered, so that our party can start working that submission must contain those signatures. So it's very important. When you go home, expect that you will be hearing from us in less than a week, outlining how things will be go. But I want you to go with the determination to go and start organizing for you. That is what I need to say as I again reiterate my <coughs> best wishes for you to have a safe journey back and give our greetings to all of them, tell all of them from this, I don't know which constituency, this is San Mentere, from San Mentere to Bakau, to all Yundum, to all the constituencies of Combo St. Mary, or the KSM. Tell them, give them our regards, but tell them the PFA has arrived. Those going to Banjul from Tobacco Road to Havdai Potopoto, 
tell them GFA is at their door, knocking at their door. We have arrived. No, 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 no. Those crossing over to Nyomi, that great country of a lot of history, land of the brave, tell the people of Nyomi and Jokadu that the GFA is coming. Those proceeding to Badibu, that warm heart of the Gambia, without whom the Gambia will be a dull place, tell the Badibunkas that GFA has come. When you go to, and those of you who go to Salum, Nyani, Nyani, Ja, up to Sami, give them the news, give them the good news that the GFA is on its feet, it's around the corner, it's coming, that Wato Sita. Those who proceed further to Sandubu and to Wuli, give them our best regards. Tell them we appreciate their commitment and we have carried out their wish to adopt the constitution, setting up our party, and that we are just about the ferry crossing over from Basse coming to them. <laughs> Kantora, Tumana, Basse, Gimara, give them our best regards. Tell them what, what was it, huh? the GFA has come, it is on its way coming. Upper flood west, lower flood west, and the three Nyaminas, give them our best regards, tell them what was it, huh? that the GFA has come. The same I can say for the Jaras and the Kians, not to talk of the very dynamic phonies. I tell the phony, phony that we are on our way coming, the GFA is around the corner, and that it will not take any, any more time before we are with them. <laughs> Combo Santo, Combo East, Brikama East, Brikama South and Brikama North, Combo South, Old Yundum, Busumbala, and San Mentren, we give them our regards and we tell them the party was, has been born on their doorstep and that we'll be out with them very soon and that they should feel ready to move along with us. I think this is what I will say to you as your Yobal, as your Silafando. Tell your people that. Thank you very much. Oh, my God. 
por julgar a Sra. Ministra Vesta, que é a Ministra Vesta, ou a Ministra Vesta, Sra. Gonçalo de Norte, ou a Ministra Sra. Vesta,